the shop. My name is Brad. One of the greatest things that you could do for your machine is to install a DRO, digital readout. Um, now I have one for my milling machine already, so it was time to get one for the lathe. Um, what could be said about DROs? Well, they can compensate for a bad screw, for backlash, for poor dials, for hard to read dials. Uh, they come packed with all sorts of goodies, you know, calculators and bolt circle features and taper features and God, a whole slew of other things. Um, so I did a little bit of research, I shopped around and I decided to go with the DRO Pros. Uh, great company, great bunch of guys, they were real helpful on the phone um, and, and real pleasant to talk to too, which really means a lot. Um, there's nothing worse than calling a company and, and, you know, and dealing with people who aren't the friendliest that they could be. But you know, the guys at DRO Pros were real cool. They were down to earth. Um, so I got the EL400 model, uh, got it shipped here, and I installed it. And the video that we're going to see here today is that whole process of me uh, installing it on the South Bend 13-inch lathe. So let's get started and we'll show you everything that had to be done to get this uh, DRO mounted. We have the cross slide scale unpackaged and what we're going to need to do is we're going to have to grab the scale, put it next to the machine, right next to the cross slide and start figuring a way and approach how we're going to mount it. Um, so what I've done was I, I put some basic tools all along the bench. Uh, getting getting things ready, things that I think I'm going to need. So let's go take a look and see, you know, how we're going to go about this. Now, what I've done was I cleaned the whole machine very, very thoroughly. I don't want to work uh, with chips, any kind of chaos. I want to eliminate. So here's our cross slide uh, scale. What we need to do really is measure and see our our travel. Okay, how far we're going to go. Um, we have two bolts here which would accept the follower rest um, and we're gonna we're gonna use them I, I don't really use the follower rest all that much I suppose if I have to I could I could remove this if need be um, but anyway th this is where we're gonna mount our reed head um, so the scale is gonna go here okay the scale will mount to the cross slide and the scale will move and the reed head will stay fixed right here. So again, what we need to do now is we need to measure our travel. All right. So what I'm going to start with is I'm going to move this cross slide as far in as as it's going to go, as far in as I think it's going to go. And I really don't think that you need to go uh, past this center with the center of the spindle. Obviously, um, it will. In reality, it will be more over here. I don't think we're ever going to move to this point because you have a tool block here, then you have a, a tool holder, and then the tool sits here. So, <clears throat> so I'm just basically sighting down the center of the of the spindle. That's about that's about center right there. So now. basically have to do this. So this guy is going to go somewhere about here. So we have Obviously, we have some space here left, so we're good to go on that on that portion. And again, I'm I'm just holding this in place, just roughly, just to see what kind of uh, distance and travel I have. <clears throat> so let's hang that down there. Now I'm going to move the scale, obviously, with this. I'm going to bring it back. So we're looking at uh, this hole is somewhere around here. So let's bring cross slide back. <clears throat> we're going to bottom it out over here now alright that's as far as it will come back 
So I'm going to put this where I had it before, somewhere around here. Grab the reed head and holding it here, we definitely have mm, about an inch and a quarter space there. So this looks like a, a good position. <clears throat> now there's a proper way to do this. The, on the DRO Pro's website, they actually have a little worksheet where you calculate your, uh, your minimum travel, your maximum travel, so on and so forth. All right, so now what I need to do is I need to build a little standoff that's gonna that's kind of mount right in here and that we can bolt this section to over here and then we're gonna have a little block okay a little standoff block that will mount right into the cross slide over here I'm gonna raise it up off of the off the saddle just a little bit and uh, and that's basically gonna be the approach so you know we need to we need to custom fabricate uh, two custom standoffs here and we're going to do that right now. Now what I did was I laid the scale down next to the cross slide and I started visualizing how I'm going to actually mount it. Um, I used uh, squares, I used parallels, I used all kinds of fun measuring equipment and basically what I've come up with is going to be a piece that's going to that's going to be inset into this connecting bar and it's going to come down and it's going to be a thick block and it's going to allow the the uh, the scale to pin in that way okay so I'm going to mill slot into here uh, about quarter of an inch deep it's going to be three quarters wide <clears throat> and and again it's going to be a, a it's going to look like a big L so it'll be a standoff block here um, that's going to be slotted so I can move it in and out and what that's going to do is it's going to it's going to allow me some some uh, adjustment to do it like this. Over here, we're going to drill um, a hole. These are Gib screw locks. Um, we're going to drill a hole somewhere around this area. We're going to put a, a block, a standoff block, and then the, the uh, scale will be able to screw right into that. So pretty simple concept. Uh, it just took a little bit of visualization and you know using the, the measuring equipment and, and taking accurate numbers. So let's get started on that. Um, and before we actually begin the machining, let me show you what the piece is going to look like. So here's the drawing that I made, quick little chicken sketch drawing. Um, we're going to have a quarter inch piece of steel that's going to be bolted. Um, and, and again, you might think, why are you using two pieces of steel here? I, it's just, I'm using the materials that I have on hand. Um, I have a long section of three quarter inch uh, square bar, um, and that's what this is going to be, three quarter inch square bar. We're going to have a little piece of, of a quarter inch on here, and I'll just attach it with two little screws. And this is going to be countersunk down into the connecting bar. And we're going to drill and tap here so we can mount the scale to the side. So just a quick little dirty drawing, uh, fast. And um, that, sh that really should do it. <clears throat> so let's get started. Let's get the connecting bar mounted up onto the mill. And we'll get the slot cut and then we'll fabricate this piece right here. Now every lathe is different and typically you see on on uh, some of the newer machines, uh, gearhead lathes and, and such, you'll see their cross slides are completely square, they're flat and it, it provides a really nice area for you to you know mount your cross slides uh, scale on. This of course is a, is a 1967 South Bend and we have a round compass uh, section for the for the compound to sit on and then we have this uh, <laughs> this stylistic curved uh, connecting bar here so that presents a big problem um, really the only square lines that I could find are these two okay this I mean it's interrupted by this arc and then this portion over here so really what I did was I just wanted to make sure that both of these, because this is a rough casting, I wanted to make sure that both of these were the same. So just using some old, you know, old calipers here, I uh, just dialed in just until it, it catches, and I want to make sure, and they do, you know, they're, they're I'm falling into the hole there, they're, they're both the same. This one is a little bit looser, this one just grabs. 
So basically, we can kind of go off of this and say this is straight. This provides like our square, um, our square plane. So what I've done was I've brought this, well, I brought the scale here, and what I did was I brought it as as close to this round portion as possible, and then just kind of by eyeball I measured, um, you know, the offset, and I think that number was. Yeah, it was 11 sixteenths of an inch. So what we're going to do is we're going to hold this scale off 11 sixteenths off of this plane right here. So what we're going to need is we're going to need a little bit of a standoff here, and we're going to need a standoff on this end. We got the connecting bar mounted up on the mill now. I just got it up on a pair of one, two, three blocks. And because I know that this is perpendicular with the slot, right, this is what attaches to the actual cross slide, I just, I, I bang, I, backed it right up against this uh, parallel which is up against the vise which we know is trammed in so we know we're now square to mill our slot so let's get ready uh, let's load up our three quarter inch end mill and cut our slot We got a quarter inch gauge block under there. It's just underneath. See that? Just enough, a little bit of clearance. All right, we're going to be tapping this for a 1024. So we have a number 25 uh, pilot drill ready to go. power tap in here and uh, I'm going to power tap this right in the chuck so if it feels like binding it will slip in the chuck rather than snap. Let's 
take this off, we'll get the, uh, the edges stoned off and we'll take the burr off of that. Using a little carborundum stone here just to take off any burrs. Now what we're going to do is we're going to mill a little slot in here uh, for the adjustment screw. This is the top portion of the little standoff that's going to go on the far end of the cross slide. Now that's the, that's the bigger slot for the head of the screw. Let me show you the screw. This will be the head of the screw right here. Now we're going to take uh, this one out. We're going to put a smaller end mill in there, 3 16 and mill the slot for the actual screw body. We are done. Well, let's take her out and take a look. Our screw should fit in there. Just nice. Perfect. That'll give us a little bit of travel that we need. Alright, we just drilled our uh, uh, our screw that's going to hold this and allow this to pivot. It's the same thing, it's a, a 1024. I got, I got most of this done. What I need to do is finish this up with a, uh, a real tap wrench. Now by using this stop, uh, our zero point will remain the same. And what we need to do is drill a through hole, 3 16 through hole, and then uh, bore it out a little bit with the countersink it with a, uh, an end mill.
<clears throat> now I'm I'm going to just drop this down, countersink this down about I don't know hundred thousands or so. Nice small cuts. You typically don't put an end mill in a chuck, but I'm just taking a very small little light cut. Perfect. Now, by tightening that, it allows this to adjust a little bit to, you know, if this to uh, to compensate for this the uh, scale to make sure that it sits perfectly square. Now we have the piece just placed here, just to see how we're how we're making out here, you know, and we have an adjustment from right to left. And then uh, this one will adjust this, this way as well. So now I just check. You could see that this will conform, you know, to uh, to pick up any kind of run out here, and then this will come here. So we'll get a pretty good fit. I got a little binding on this this screw and this groove over here. I just gotta tweak it a little bit, make sure it's it's, uh, it's fitting loose enough to adjust. Do that with a file. Alright, so there's the scale. Now I can adjust this guy down. Alright, so there it is. We have a little bit of a gap underneath here, which is good. And now we're going to get ready to make the standoff for this, this uh, side of the cross slide. That's looking pretty good now. <laughs> 